Everyone ready? Welcome to Just Gen Lab. Mm -hmm. You see this? We have a dream. <laughs> Here we go. My game face on. What do you, mm, 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 what yeah. do you think of the table tennis? Yeah. All right. It's this thing. What if a church actually took God at his word? Where every member felt the part of something eternal. And no matter who you were, where you were from, or what you'd done, you knew you had a part to play in something bigger than yourself. Where the Bible wasn't just a suggestion, but it was our blueprint for everything we did, even the controversial parts. And those who led did so by being willing to sit on the floor first when there weren't enough chairs for everyone else. Where we didn't follow a clock or a genre or a cultural movement, we followed the Holy Spirit even when no one else did. And when we spoke about family, we actually lived it with relationships that were loving, raw, and messy. Where miracles still happened, prophecies still flowed, signs and wonders followed, and the poor were welcomed with open arms. And above all else, when you walked into our midst, you couldn't help but meet the person of Jesus. We're not there yet, but this is our dream. Welcome to Josh Jen Love. So welcome everybody to Josh Jen Love, another episode. I'm Neil Gregg and I've missed everybody around the world, but mostly I've missed Kevin. Ah, oh, thank so you. So good to be back with you. Yeah, and it's really cool to have you back, Neil. I feel like I've missed nations literally in the past two weeks because I've been hearing the statistics about how many more people have been uh, watching in from places like India uh, and Canada. We know about the guys in New Zealand and Mauritius and uh, many things that Jesus is doing in those homes and in those nations. It's just so cool what God is doing in and amongst us. The Sunday, I actually had the privilege of inviting two of my friends to one of our church it, yeah. services in Josh and City Bowl here in Cape Town. And both of them, the two friends I invited, both of them responded to the gospel, which is amazing. Amazing, man. Did you hear about the baptisms, the water baptisms that happened in another congregation? Yes, I heard about that. Um, I think we actually have footage on that, so why don't we check it out? Um, my name is Elisma van Vieren. I was born today, but I was born for my life to give it to my life. And my life is full of fun. Hi, I'm Padma. I recently came back to Josh Jane and I found Jesus saying I needed to get baptized again. So we're going into the sea to get baptized. <laughs> How amazing was that? I love seeing these testimonies. And uh, please, if you have testimonies like this, the water baptism, people um, coming back to church after many, many years, please share those stories with us. We want to hear what God is doing in your country, in your home, in your city. Um, so please share with us. On that note, we're going to talk about family. Yes, our everyday carry for the Christian. We've touched on quite a few amazing and important topics. And today we are on family, which is amazing. And just to hear what God is going to say through the amazing family that you are actually going to be interviewing now on the EDC. So I'm going to go fetch this uh, Van Furen family. They're going to be here soon. Um, they've been a family in Josh Jen and throughout our church that has been a great model of how to raise kids in a godly family. So let me go fetch them. Awesome. All right, we're going to go check out the Van Furens now and go and see what's in their van, in their everyday carry. And here we go. See you there now.
I'm Vern. Good to see you. How are you? Come on. Hey, this is the van, eh? This is the van. Right, guys, it's their everyday carry. Ivan and Nathan and the family are going to show us what's inside you. their van. Top secret stuff. I don't know if we can show. Please don't. Okay, now today we'll go behind the scenes a little bit and show you what's in the van. You guys often see the van. And we've got some pretty interesting things, Neil. I don't know what you want to start with. We've got toys. It's kind of uh, everyday kind of stuff. I think the toys, I mean, well, there's been man bags for the last few weeks. Everyone's had a look inside Jeff's bag and Will's bag. If you, what bag do you guys carry? Man bags. Well, this is, this is our man bag. <laughs> Medical. The, a manly bag. Not the prettiest, <laughs> but this is what a first aid kit up the West Coast, wherever we go, be ready in and out season. Don't leave home without it. So this is really cool. This is our little man bag that we carry. It's got a lot of everything in this. Uh, it's pretty cool. That's an essential bag, guys. <laughs> yeah. Very what else? Okay, now, don't leave home without it. GoPro. One of our sponsors that we do have and uh, pretty cool we as a family we, we try to document life wherever we go and we walk around uh, we put on nathan's head or whatever it is <laughs> we stick it up That's well. where, wherever it goes yeah we always got a little gopro so it's one of the things that we carry generally most days uh, have a couple of gopros with us nate what else we got in there here we go we got some surfboards here we go okay the surfboards we love surfing so a lot of josh jen do like surfing they like golf we love sports <laughs> but you don't have to be a surfer to be part of this church which is cool but in our van we love boards and one of the cool ones is, uh, it's actually Nathan designed this, he loves designing, and we'll see a little bit of that later, but um, yeah, just surfboards are part of our quiver. Normally we have trailers and boards, uh, so this is one of, the, one of the things in our van, Neil. So you guys have seen how, how tall Kevin is, he's a bit shorter than me, but Kevin's been wanting to try out surfing. So we think that Kevin should learn with this family. Definitely. And uh, what, what board would you recommend to Kevin? Have you got something here? Yep. This one him. Oh, this there is, you go. This Kevin's is, board. <laughs> Kevin, this is made for you. It's kind of like really big. And <laughs> Neil, this is what they call a foil board. And a foil gets attached to it. There's actually this thing called a foil. Basically an airplane wing that's underneath the water. Oh, and brilliant. this gets attached to the board. And this is kind of new, revolutionary. Uh, we love creating these kind of things as new toys and we get to fly above the water. It's really cool. Uh, so these two go together. So I think we'll start Kevin, maybe put Howie straight on this and just see what they can do with this kind of thing. Be really I'm cool looking there. forward to watching them surf. So what else would you say is an essential that is always in the van? Tools, we've got skateboards, we've got tools, but one really good thing is a knife. I don't know if I can pull it out. Can I pull it out? It wouldn't be an everyday carry without a knife, but guys, this is not a small built song knife. So it's, that's a real, <laughs> this is a real knife. Is a real knife everybody. <laughs> I don't know if you need a license for it, but we use this uh, for up, traveling up the West Coast. This is a, just a regular diving knife. Uh, not very sharp at all, more for just digging up stuff if we need it. Um, but so I've got a beautiful daughter, so most guys carry shotguns. I can't, no, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's good, good enough to have uh, when we go up the West Coast. It's always in the back of the car. You sorted out any sharks with them, though? Yeah, sorting out sh uh, sharks and all the rest of it. So, Ooh. how do you keep it so tidy? <laughs> what clothes we oh, There we go. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you can't touch. Actually, these, I think these are Andrews from the last West Coast trip that we had. Uh, they're not masks, they're definitely extra larger. So, Andrew, if you're looking for your undies, yeah, they <laughs> we are. know where they are. Ooh, and throw those away there. So, guys, uh, I'm sure you've done much family time, lots of surf trips. How often and when last did you go to partner in churches around the country and spend time with them while on your travels? Yeah, we love traveling. I think it's a part of our family. We love to adventure, we love to have fun. We're also visiting some of those churches. So, we got up to Richards Bay recently, up to Mozambique and uh, just the great work that God's doing in Richard's Bay. So that's been amazing, uh, just seeing the life and uh, all the attributes that, that's happening out in that area. So we're gonna go and wanna ask you first, what is, what is it that you're gonna be touching on today in the message? What's in your everyday carry for us as the church? Great, so today is a little bit different. We got a, a little different take, uh, kind of mix things up a little bit as far as church goes in everyday carry. And we're gonna take a look at family and how uh, God's created family, how we are a work in progress, but then also how we can be a church that reflects God and be a true family and bring the lonely into family. It's gonna be an amazing time, a little bit different. Go behind the scenes on a few of the takes there. So it should be a good time, Neil. Look forward to it. All right, so why don't we get the rest of the family and start heading up. You, you guys ready? Let's go. Everyone, welcome to Josh Chen Live. And what a privilege it is to be with you as we unpack something that's very close to God's heart, but a really important aspect that we look at on Josh Chen Live today, and that is the topic of family. And what a privilege it is to be with you guys. We're going to take a little bit of a different approach this week and see what God's doing in our lives as a family, but also to encourage you, no matter where you are in the world watching right now, we welcome you. 
and trust that these next few minutes will be really key and possibly God changing your life in a radical way. But to start off on family, I want to introduce this amazing family because they are my family and <laughs> very excited about having them on the show this, this morning. And first off, my beautiful wife, Corin, been married for how many years? Uh, let me get this right. Corin, how long have we been married for? <laughs> okay. 25. <laughs> 25 years. It's been amazing, 25 years and really stood by my side and very key part of our family. Corin, What's it like being part of this crazy family, I should ask? <laughs> well, it's been exciting, challenging, stretching, but I've, it's been an adventure that we've really enjoyed. Yeah, it's yeah. great. And Corin's really stood by my side. We've had some crazy times. Uh, we come from Hawaii. We spent about 15 years in Hawaii and got here about 13 years ago from Hawaii, moved across to South Africa, joined Josh Jen, and man, our lives have radically changed since the moment we walked through those doors. It hasn't been the same, and it's been a really exciting journey. And my kids have been a part of it, and this is my surf rat, Nathan. Nathan, <laughs> what do you do in life, and what, what's your part in this family? So I'm a part of this weird family, <laughs> but Thanks. I love surfing, as you mentioned, but mostly doing it with you guys as well. So, mm. I mean, it's never been boring being a part of this family. So, yeah, it's always been fun hanging out, just having fun together and just doing life. So. It's been great. And yeah, in a few minutes, we'll cut across to a little bit of behind the scenes of what our family does. Nathan's uh, quite a specialist when it comes to water sports. I won't brag about him. He's my boy, but God has gifted him in many areas. He loves Jesus. Uh, he loves family. And we together love family. Uh, that's very close to God's heart. And that's why we want to share with you. And one thing from the outset, a disclaimer, we are not perfect. Uh, we are a work in progress. If you stick around us for more than a day in the workplace, in the water, uh, in life, you'll see that we are definitely a work in progress. But we love family. We've been brought up in family, and it's something that's very close to God's heart. And um, another part of our family, integral part, actually, she's a key. She's our worshiper. Genevieve, what's your background? What's your involvement in this lovely family? <laughs> Yeah, well, it's definitely never boring with this family round. I've definitely learned to be flexible with uh, travel and I think definitely being pulled into the media side of life, um, get to film these guys in the water and make them look good. So yeah, I think I'm definitely the one that makes them famous. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's For sure. <laughs> yeah, she really does. And it's been great. Just We, we work together as a unit. Uh, God's gifted us in different areas. We each have our own individual aspects and personalities, but together we make a team and quite a crazy team, but we love life. We love adventure we love fun and most of all as a family we love Jesus and I hope as you watch this over the next few minutes is that you'll fall more in love with Jesus you'll fall in love with family and you'll fall in love with the true family of uh, that God would call church right now I'd love to cut behind the scenes rather than us taking up time here go behind the scenes with Genevieve just a little bit a quick brief cut down of what she does behind the scenes so let's check out what she does the coronavirus pandemic could be a highly infectious virus. The corona pandemic swept the continent. The largest coronavirus lockdown in the world is happening. A national lockdown in South Africa continues. Hey everyone, you're here watching XL TV. I'm Genevieve. And currently we are experiencing a worldwide COVID-19 virus lockdown. This is a very turbulent time for many people around the world. But today we're going to be talking about how we can be fearless during this time. I'm part of a team called Premier Productions and together I co-produce a TV show called Extreme Life TV. And I also head up the media side of life and it has been an incredible time full of amazing memories. So our team uh, specializes in capturing action sports footage, covering events, and producing media that is featured across the world. So Jenna, what do you do? Well, I, I go for extreme life. So my passion for multimedia first started when I was really young, around seven years old, where I used to film my brother and his friends doing sports. And from then on, it grew just into yeah. such a passion for experimenting with new ideas and trying different mediums. I do quite a mix of sports. Probably my favorite sport to do is longboard surfing. I love it because it's almost like a retro vibe to it where you're dancing on the water and you're just uh, able to have such a vibe with your friends and it's such a family sport actually. And I, I love how we can all just get together and cruise across the water. And it's really such great memories made doing that.
Yeah, it really helps actually during the sport because it gives you an extra edge on understanding how the sport really works. And you can use that knowledge to help you film even better. competed in many competitions over the past few years, uh, several of them including longboard surfing and Santa paddleboarding. So with the competing side of life there have been many fears I've had to face. And what I've learned is having to keep pushing through and I can't stop no matter what happens. And as you face that fear, you look back and you see the victory at the end of it and you realize there's such a reward for pushing past that. Even as you're watching right now, we're faced with so many different fears of sickness, of economic crisis, and the question that comes to mind is, how are we to overcome these fears? Yeah, even for me right now, I'm faced with so many different fears, and there's so many different questions that arise. Will I have enough to get by? What will happen to my friends and family and the world around us? And that's when I turn to scripture and see what God says about everything. The first scripture that comes to mind when I was searching the scriptures on what God was saying is in Psalms 34, it says, I sought the Lord and He answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. And what God told me from that was that He is more than capable to deliver us from our fears. As, and as we seek the Lord, that He can deliver us. And the key there for me was to seek the Lord through it all and not to give up. The second scripture that I found was in Isaiah 41. And he says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And for me, it really just says God, he, his heart is to help us. He wants to help us get through these times and he wants us to be victorious and look backwards and see what he has done in our lives. And oftentimes that won't mean that it will be a bed of roses and it will be an amazing thing to walk through. But it's as we persevere and as we look to God, he will help us overcome our fears that we can be victorious at the end and all point to his glory. Yes, I really want to encourage you during this time, do not lose hope, for God is in control. He wants to help you get through this. And it's up to us to go before Him and ask Him for help, because He is more than capable of helping us through this time. So give all your fears over to God. Tell Him about them. Tell Him about your worries and your anxiousness and your fears. And He is more than capable of turning that fear, and He's going to use it for His glory. So great, that's just a little behind the scenes of what we do as a family. And Genevieve, like I said, is a key part of what we role as a family. And I was wondering, as we were preparing for this this morning, what is on God's heart for family? And I thought the first and key place to start is, let's go to the Bible and look for a perfect family. Well, I started in Genesis, and guess what? <laughs> there wasn't a lot of really excellent families. From the start to finish, uh, there's a thing that's called sin that entered the world from the start. And we, we see Adam and Eve, the first created beings. And right from the start, we see Adam and Eve sin. Adam right away blames his wife and sin has entered the world. And this thing called family that God had in, intended to be so perfect has fallen apart because of sin. And from this outset, from the start, as we look through the scriptures, as we look from Genesis to the end, we see how this thing of family has been eroded and corroded because of sin. And we see Adam blames his wife they have, they have two sons. The one son kills the other brother. And from the, from the start, we just see this downfall of man from one stage to the next. We see son betraying son. We see brothers betraying brothers, selling them into slavery. We see adultery. We see rape. We see murder that's happening in the families. We come across to King David. We think, at last, we find a king that's in God's eyes, a, a good man. And even in King David, as a perfect, almost as a perfect being as we would see him, he falls. He has an affair. He has an adulterous affair. He, he causes a murder to happen. And all these things are because of sin. And it's, the sin is so deep embedded in man. And later we'll talk a little bit more about how the sin can affect you, how it affected my life. And I looked through the scriptures like, man, we are a mess generation. But thank God for his plan, his ultimate plan, his grace that he had 
Uh, look at us as a family, like I said earlier, we're a work in progress, but because of his grace, because of his mercy, he gave us a chance. And it says so clearly in John 3.16, it says, For God, for God the Father, loved the world so much. He loved me, he loved you as you're watching today. He loves you so much that he gave his only son. So he brings the son, his only son into the world to die on the cross so we can have eternal life and have our sins forgiven. There's a chance of re redemption that happens, a change of life, a change of um, ultimate destination being eternal, eternal life. And in that, God demonstrates his own love. He sends his son. And the great thing out of this, a church is born. And for the first time, a real family, how God intended. And we look at that in, in Acts, we see how there's unity. The people are devoting themselves to the scriptures. They, they're devoting themselves to God. They're giving of, the, giving of themselves. And throughout this time, we see a church being born and a true family being reflected. And I looked at this and I was like, man, God, how do we get this right in our generation? And we really want to show the world what, it, what does true family look like. As people look at us, we want to reflect Jesus. And again, we don't get it right all the time, but can we be those as, as Christians, as believers, if you're a follower of Christ, can we be those that are willing to reflect somewhat of God's glory and we've got to try to get this right and for this we need to look into the scriptures and look a bit deeper and see what it says so looking deeper we'll pick up with what Paul says in Colossians 3 verse 18 to 21 and I'm going to read for us what he says and this is basically instructions for Christian families or Christian households and in verse 18 he starts with wives I don't know why he starts with wives but Paul he gives us these commandments and these are not my words today I'm reading from the scripture I'm reading from God's holy word and these are instructions for us as a family, and we try to live by them. But even as you're watching today, maybe some of this uh, be keys are unlocked in your life. As if you're a wife, if you're an individual, maybe you're not even married today. Maybe you're single. Maybe you've been married before. You've been hurt. You've been tainted by relationships, relationships by marriages, um, by family hurts, disillusioned with church. As you listen to us today, as we share something of God's heart, may there be a key that gets unlocked as we read through the scriptures. And I love to read Colossians 3, verse 18. and says, wives, Corin. <laughs> I wouldn't pick up my wife. She's, she's really good in this area. But wives, submit yourselves to husbands, to your husbands, as is fitting to the Lord. Verse 19, it says, Husbands, that's me, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. It says to children, Nathan, Jenna, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. And then fathers, do not embitter your children or they will become discouraged. So those are just key scriptures that um, Paul he gives to the church to encourage them and almost command them. And I want to pick up on an individual basis. As we break this down and look at it on an individual aspect, I want to start with myself personally. And before I go to wife, even though Paul starts, he says wives, that's his first part, he's addressing the wives. But I want to switch it around, just have a little bit of liberty in this and starting with the husbands, because often the husbands are the ones I feel in for my own, my own life where we drop the ball. So I want to pick up from a, from a leadership point of view, God's called men and husbands to lead. And um, from a husband's point of view, from a leader's point of view, it says, husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. It's a sacrificial love. It's a deep love that only God can give you the grace and the ability to help you with. Um, apart from my beautiful wife, I love her beauty. I love who she is as a person. She's amazing and we love each other. It's been 25 amazing years of being married. And for that part, I thank her for her patience. But in, the, in that, We've had times we've had, we've had to work through issues. We've had to work through circumstances where she's from a different background. I come from a loving family. My mom and dad had uh, six brothers and sisters, so a big family, very loving, very touchy, and we learned all about family. Karen comes from a little bit of a different background where it was, was different for her, and so we had to adapt our ways. So in that, I had to learn sacrificial love. And for me, when I first met Karen, I was very selfish. Uh, <laughs> I'm working on that aspect, but I was very selfish. I was a professional athlete, uh, traveled the world, looking after myself, looking after my sponsors, trying to be famous, trying to uh, be on front covers of magazines and TV and all the rest of it. Just really selfish ambitions. Even though I loved the Lord, I still had a uh, very self-motivated love. And coming to a marriage, I had to adapt. And it's been 25 years, and I'm, hopefully I'm slowly but surely adapting to, be, <laughs> yeah, she says I have, but slowly adapting to be more sacrificial and loving my wife the way that Christ loves the church, that he gave his life for the church. And so for me, I've had to adjust. And as I adjust, as I see the best for Karen, as I see as a husband, what can make her flourish in the ways of God? What can make her shine with her friends? How can she become more of Jesus? How can she be that person that's equipped to do the, to the works of the ministry? That's where us as a family come together as a unit 
and we are able to flourish. And again, it's a day by day thing. It's a work in progress, but that's my heart is to, to see her uh, flourish. So for husbands out there, I want, to, I want to encourage, I want to challenge you. What are you doing? How are you helping your family, your wife, uh, your children to grow in the things of God, to be equipped to do the works of the ministry that, that God has commanded us? A very important key. And then for Karen, uh, as we look at the wives, uh, very, it says, wives, submit to your husbands as is fitting to the Lord. Now in today's culture, submitting to husbands, there's different takes on that, but again, I'm reading what God's word says. These are not my words of Ivan. God says, wives, submit to your husbands. Uh, Karen studied, she was gonna be a clothing designer, and she was a very good clothing designer. She had dreams, she had plans for her life, and um, she laid it down. She said, Lord, what do you want me to be a part of this family, to make this family work? And maybe Karen, just pick up uh, how you were flexible, just in a brief sentence, how are you able to adapt in that area? Uh, I think I was, it helped that I was young and just, I was very much in love with my husband. So it made it easy for me, um, leaving home, we literally left South Africa and moved over to an island. And so I literally started off with a clean slate. Mm. And in that process, I just realized that being flexible and allowing God to do work in my heart and to flow as my husband flowed. So it opened, it broadened my horizon mm. as in to life, where I had a one channel design mm. in clothing. Being married to Ivan and being flexible and allowing God to do a work in me, I was able to see so much more of life and just to see a marriage come to uh, it, was, it was an adventure. It was beautiful to seeing how, even just with our children on board, um, what God showed us. Yeah. yeah, so being flexible and being available with my time and even with my attitude, and it, it was yeah. you know, a paved way to life. Yeah, I think the key for Karen is very flexible, very backing, and submissive. She submitted, but not that I would rule over her, but she was just... Lord, what do you want to mean? As she submitted to God, it made that much easier. So for wives out there, yeah, just be willing to submit. God, what do you, what, how can I make this family unit better? Whether, it's, whether you're single and you're serving in a church, submitting to leadership, these are all aspects that we learn to see healthy church flourish around the world. And that's so true and so, so dear to God's heart is to see healthy church, authentic, healthy church. And as we see authentic families uh, established around the world. We're one of men that are, that are aspiring to be authentic. We don't always get it right, again, but we want to be authentic, we want to be real. As you hang out with us, as we, as we move through life, we, we don't just want to be us four little guys cruising in our own little van, having fun. We want to be bring others along on the, for the journey with us. And I think that's been one of our keys is how do we draw people in to our family, to life, mm -hmm. and then run forward to bring them into church. And the next part in verse 20, this is a key part. Now for all the children watching on us, you guys pro probably have Sunday school after this. But this is a key part for I'm going to look at Nathan and Jenna. It says in verse 20, it says, Children, Nathan, Jenna, <laughs> obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. And one of the, one of the Ten Commandments was, Honor your mother and father. So children, obey your parents and honor them. Jenna, I'm going to pick on you quick. Um, do you always agree with me? No. <laughs> she all doesn't always. All the time, no. <laughs> she definitely doesn't always agree with everything I say, neither does Nathan. And, and that's, that's not a bad thing. They need to have their own... Uh, personal convictions, their own ways in life. But there's a thing about honor, uh, honoring church, honoring, honoring leaders, honoring our mother, mothers and fathers. And Jenna, how do you honor us? I mean, what, maybe a trick question, but how would you break it down for the viewers? <laughs> yeah, I think it's actually something God's been, has been working in my heart the past few months. And it's actually how as children, you can actually be selfish and looking out for your best interests, but how God switched my mind actually uh, to see your best interest, my parents' best interest at heart and see how I can honor them by acknowledging their aspirations and hopes and dreams as well and building them up. And even when you live under their roof, especially um, to the way the traditions they do and mm. just to honor them with how they want things done because then that's how a family works is you work as a team together. So I think honoring your parents is working as a team with them and not against them. So yeah, that's what it's been. Very good. Yeah. So yeah, again, if you're as parents, as you've got kids around you and even children as you're watching, I just want to challenge you to honor your mother and father. And the Bible says, then it will go well with you. Uh, you'll see the fruit of it. You'll see the fruit into your lives as you honor, honor your mother and father and the leaders that are around you. And verse 21, our final verse for, the, for this scripture passage and says, parents, fathers, do not embitter 
or exasperates a big word they use. Do not exasperate your children or they may become discouraged. For us as parents, not to be those that overwhelm our kids in different areas. Uh, for us, we have times of adjustment. We have milkshake time where we come together as a family. We talk about the deep issues where I need to adjust, Cara needs to adjust, and um, even the kids talk into our lives. And very often I have to confess and apologize. Not always easy as a leader to apologize, but there's something of God that, that takes place in our lives as we surrender ourselves, we humble ourselves, and see what He does into our lives. And for us not to exasperate our kids, and I think a good example was when Nathan was younger, he was quite fearful of the ocean. Uh, as a waterman, I would like to take him deeper into uh, the larger part of the ocean to go ride big waves across different places that we travel to. And I found that he had a fear at times. And I was unaware of it, but so Karen would address me and just mention, like, Av, I think he needs to uh, take a bit of time before he goes deeper. And I became aware of it. And in this time, I would gradually help him take one step at a time. First the shallows, going a bit deeper, and slowly walk with him into the moor, into the things, into ways that would become bigger, and he could take on uh, larger areas, and even travel with me outside of his very comfort zone. And in this, God did a major work in our lives as a family, seeing a breakthrough, how there was an example but in that, how God could use him in the long run to take him to the destiny that he has for Nathan. And talking about destinies, talking about Nathan, let's cut across real quickly and see what God's done behind the scenes, overcoming fear in Nathan's life. How's it going? Welcome back to another episode of XL TV. I'm Nathan Van Buren and I have the privilege of doing the how-to shows on XL TV. Hey everyone, we're back here for XL TV. Today we'll be showing you the basics on how to cross them. Hey, we're back here for XL TV and today we'll be showing you how you can do basic slides on a longboard. So we're currently in our garage slash toy room, which holds some of the gear that we use to film XL TV. So over here, we got one of my favorites. We have windsurfers. These are super awesome. We take out on the really windy days. And then moving over, we got a couple surfboards, which are really awesome for when the waves are cooking. We go out and take these. And then one of my personal favorites, we have hydrofoil boards. These are awesome when the waves are, it doesn't matter what it's like, you take these out whenever it's big or small, these are really awesome. And then moving across, we get to one of my other favorites is a surfboard. So this is really awesome, You, it's like a really big surfboard but you stand on top and you have a paddle and that's really good for your fitness and your core and your back, so one of my favorites as well. And then moving up, we got the longboard, one of the awesome sports that I love to do and when the waves are kind of small, take this thing out, go for a ride, have a lot of fun. So that pretty much sums up this part. Let's take a look over here. We have these big boards and these are for what we call downwinding. So these boards play a big part when you're out in the ocean doing downwinders. I would classify myself as an ocean sport athlete because we use such a wide variety of ocean craft. So let's move on and check out my happy place. So welcome to the XL TV office. This is our headquarters and where we get to design and test all of our equipment for XL TV. So one of my passions is actually designing the equipment myself, such as surfboards. I get to design them exactly how we need them for the shows and for riders and people around the world, which is super awesome. So I've been competing in competitions since I was a young boy. I've really enjoyed the whole aspect of the competing as well as the free ride. But through the competing, I've been able to travel around the world and go to some amazing events. So I've had the privilege of competing in one of the craziest contests ever, which was the Molokai to Oahu. It is a world championship paddleboarding race from one island to another. So it is about 52 kilometers, it's 32 miles in between the massive channel in between the island of Molokai and the Wahoo. It's a very treacherous channel and it can be really fearful at times. So when we arrived at the starting line of the Molokai to Wahoo, I had a lot of fear. Because what happens, you are at the starting line and you can't see where you're headed. All you see is open ocean and it is very wild out there. 
is 52 kilometers, so it's a very long way to be on a standard paddle board. So I had a lot of fear at the starting line, but as soon as I started the race, hit the water, and I could set my eyes on where I was going, all the fear was gone and it was just replaced by determination and the will to get across that channel. All right, ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for Aiden and Murray, second place in the fourth division behind our champion, Highland. So I learned a valuable lesson from that race. That fear that I felt is actually the same as in life. Sometimes we feel fear and it is not a good thing. But what we must do is set our eyes on the finishing line and what God says. So one of the amazing scriptures in the Bible that relates to fear is in Psalm 56 verse 3 to 4. And it says, When I'm afraid, I put my trust in you. In God, whose word I praise. In God, I trust. I shall not be afraid. So this scripture can really relate to us. So what happens when we're in life and we see turmoil around us and everything may not be going as we think it might. Like when I was in the race in the Molokai to Oahu and it was, it was not peaceful around me. It was wild and it was crazy. But all I had to do was keep my eyes on where I wanted to go and the finish line. So that's exactly how we must be. When life may be going the wrong way, when it may be turmoil, we must keep our eyes on God and what His plans are for us. So I just want to encourage you, if you are facing storms in your life and it may not be going how you want it to, just to really put your faith in Jesus and He will help you overcome the obstacles in your life. There's just a little bit behind the scenes of us as a family, Nathan, Jenna, and just to give you a little outlook, a little bit of uh, color into this show. And for us, as we wrap this up now, I'd love to see what is God's heart in all this. As we talk about family, it's, is it about us as a family traveling around the world, being cool, being relevant, bringing people into our lives, or is there a bigger picture? And the key scripture for this morning, if we have to leave with anything, is Psalms 68 verse 6, and it says, God puts the lonely into family. God will ask a question. Being lonely, what's it like? I mean, even as you're watching right now, some of you are watching around the world, perhaps lonely, you've had abusive affairs, things have gone down in your life, and a lot of the questions that will come very often is, is there a perfect family? And we've got to pause, and I don't think there is. Uh, you could ask another question, is there a perfect church? Now, well, I'd love to say, Josh Jen, for me, feels perfect, but <laughs> we're a work in progress too. As I'm part of Josh Jen, as I've seen what God's doing, we've got a long way to go, but we love Jesus. So there's no perfect church, and Perhaps you've been hurt by church, you've been disillusioned, and you're watching this morning and you're feeling, what's this all about? What's this family thing? How do we become a part of it? Do I even really want to start this journey again? Well, I want to say that God loves you. God loves you so much. We touched on John 3.16 earlier. It says God loves you so much that he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for you so that you could have your sins forgiven. That sin that came into the world, that sin that destroyed the divine pattern that God had for families, for families that sin has entered in our lives. And the Bible says we've all sinned. We've all fallen short of God's perfect standard. But he has a plan for his church. He wants his church to shine. He wants us as a family to shine. And he wants you to shine as you're watching today. No matter where you are in the world, right across the world, people are watching right now. And really great having you part of this. But more, more deeply, God is concerned. There's actually no coincidence that you're watching today. It's beautiful that you're actually watching. You're taking time to listen to us as a family perhaps been watching these episodes, this series about what God's doing in South Africa, but more than that, God's concerned about you individually, and He has a plan for you. He has a plan and a purpose for you, and that's a beautiful, and that's the good news that we have today. That God wants you to be part of His beautiful family, and that's the church. That's a church that He's designed, He's created. He's, he's busy refining His church across the world right now. The, the family, the true bride, the true family is being refined, and uh, we have the privilege of being part of it in Cape Town, but no matter where you are, uh, God has a plan for your life, and it starts by knowing Him personally. And it starts by surrendering your life, uh, being part of this family. Uh, he puts the lonely into family, and it starts by knowing the Father, knowing the Creator. And perhaps as you're watching today, you've never had a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. 
well, this is the good news. And this is actually why we're doing this series more than anything else. Great talking about church, talking about families. Uh, we've heard about worship last week and all these great topics and subjects. We'll hear about church next week. All these great topics that are so dear to God's heart, but he's actually very concerned about you as an individual, that he places you in a family and the potential and the opportunity of uh, everlasting eternal life. And as you're watching today, we want to tell you that God loves you. And today you can respond. Uh, the great thing is responding, is saying, God, you know, you know my heart. As you're watching right now, God knows you, knows exactly where you've been. He knows your hurt. He knows everything about you. And he's calling you. And the beautiful thing is that he loves you. And as you respond, and I think for myself, I was four years old when I responded to the gospel. I didn't understand deep uh, theolo theological aspects about the Bible, but I knew at four years of age that I needed to respond to the Lord. And he called me. It's been an amazing journey serving the Lord hasn't been easy. I promise you it's not going to be an easy journey, but it's going to be rewarding. It's, it's an amazing journey serving Jesus. I can vouch for it from, as I watch my family, as, as I watch those around us in church, how he's doing amazing work. And as you watch this morning or today, wherever you're at, whatever time zone that you're in right now, God loves you. And we want to give you that opportunity right now as you're watching to respond to the gospel. And as I've competed, I've, I've surfed in big waves and at times I've been held under by big waves. And very often I'd be underwater, I wouldn't be, wouldn't be able to breathe. I'd come up and out of the water, I'd put my hand up like this and I'd, I'd almost be like, somebody help me. And the, fortunately at the events, we would have lifeguards and we'd have guys on jet skis. As I put my hand up, they would come past and they'd grab me and put me on the back and they would save me from drowning. They'd put me on the back of the jet ski and take me to a safe place. And the same thing for us as you're watching today, you can be saved, saved from your sins, saved from the things that have held you back, a new life in Jesus. As you respond, you don't necessarily have to put your hand up. Like often times in church, you say, put your hand up. No, it's a heart response saying, God, I know I need you. So right now, as you're watching, can I pray with you? Can we pray as a family? Um, and maybe just bow our heads and say, God, as you're watching, why not bow, bow your head, close your eyes right where you're at right now. Jesus, you know I've messed up. Father, I want to ask for forgiveness. Uh, yeah, God, if I'm really true to myself as I'm watching today, you know everything about me. Uh, I'm a mess but you've given me hope, you've given me life. And Jesus, I wanna thank you. I wanna thank you, I wanna invite you into my heart right now. Just say this prayer, say these words in your own heart. Just say, Jesus, come into my heart right now. Father, forgive me of my sins, the sin that's messed me up, the sin that's corroded and corrupted my life in so many ways. Jesus, come into my heart right now, I invite you. Help me, God, help me to live for your glory. Help me to live my life for everything that you have for me. I surrender my life. Father, I pray to put me into a healthy church. If you're not part of a healthy church, pray that. Father, put me into a church that I can grow and become more like you. Lord, I surrender my life to you. And right now on the bottom of your screen, you'll see a, a number on the bottom. Please feel free to contact that. Um, there's people that will be waiting or be able to assist you further in, the, in your growth with the Lord. And then for you as a family, uh, maybe you're an individual, not even married this morning. Or maybe you're part of a family. And God's just touched on keys or areas that you need to adjust uh, as you read those scriptures this morning. We trust even right now. Father, I pray as people are watching that you'll uh, just bring such a conviction in their lives that areas they need to adjust. Maybe for husbands uh, that where they need to adjust, lead their family stronger or more gentle. Uh, for wives to submit where they're not submitting. For children that are watching, uh, really to submit to their parents, to honor their mother and father, and then to honor their, the leaders that are around them. Father, these are things that are on your heart. So God, as we end this day, we thank you. We thank you for this time that we could be with you. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. So just today, as you've been watching, we just trust that this has been a blessed time for you. Just as we've shared as a family, what God's done in our lives, we're a journey, and it's been an amazing journey. And I hope for you as you've watched, and as you're watching this series, that you become part of a healthy church. And there's a number at the bottom of the screen. Please contact that. They're gonna help direct you, get you plugged into a church. It's gonna help you grow in the ways of the Lord, and become all that God created you to be, to be equipped and ready for His service. It's gonna be an amazing journey that God has for you. So we encourage you, keep going strong. And until next week, thanks for hanging out with us and have an awesome and blessed week. God bless you guys. Right, that was awesome to hear from Ivan, Karen, and the kids. What a wonderful family. I'm sure that you've heard Ivan um, invite you into his lounge almost. And um, I wanna just encourage you guys around the world to please uh, message us, contact us. I know there's a number on the screen. Sometimes it feels like you're just sending your message or your voice into an open space, but there actually is somebody on the other side of the line, a real person who's waiting patiently to talk to you. So please send us your message and uh, we just want to connect you into our family, into our homes. And so please do that. Uh, don't waste time. Um, send us a message. We cannot wait to meet you and to talk to you. We're going to move on to our forecast now. Remember, 
If you want to join us at our Justin venues, check out our Justin website to find out where we are meeting and if there's a congregation near you. But for now, we are heading off. And Neil, it was cool to have you. Goodbye, good Kevin. To you. Great to be back with you, man. I've missed being here. And goodbye to everybody. We're going to see you soon. Awesome. Cheers, guys. Hello, you beautiful Jesus lovers. My name is Melani Latoy. We'll be presenting a prophetic training time again soon. The 14th of August, the Friday evening, we have Andrew Selly. He'll be giving us apostolic perspective on the prophetic. And then on the Saturday morning, we'll continue with training. So for all of you who are hungry for more in the prophetic, who wants to be better equipped, we see you there on the live stream, 14th and 15th of August. Hi everyone, this is Leonard. On Thursday, the 13th of August at 7 p.m. on the Josh Jen Facebook page, we are going to have a live student discussion where we're going to tackle the topic of relationships and dating. So if you've got any questions about dating, about love and holding someone's hand or going for coffee with someone in church, you're welcome to join us. We're going to take some questions, try and answer those. And we can't wait to see you there virtually.